five for summer camp. That's right, everybody will reconvene with their respective clubs as of July 1st. So first question, Kev, the biggest question heading into the shortened season, what is it? It's a healthy position players, figuring out how to start out fast immediately. Because when you're talking about, you don't have a chance to go 7-17 seven and 17 in April, you know, where it's a little cold. And every, no, we're starting off right in the, the, the heat of the summer, and it's time to get going. So usually you have a six-week serious season in the spring training and PFPs and about 80 at-bats. No, you're going to get 25 good at-bats, a couple inner squads in your stadiums, and get ready to roll because you don't have time to go 7-17. Seven and 17. So everybody's got a chance. For me, I think there's a lot of pressure on the managers to press the right buttons, not only in terms of keeping guys fresh and healthy and all that, but are they going to manage every game come late July and August like it's October, meaning that they're going to play for the lead after four innings, and if they have a stacked bullpen, are they going to try and win the last five innings? Because you want to get as many wins in your back pocket as possible. Not to say that every game in a 162-game slate doesn't mean something, but when you're talking about a 60-game slate and a five-game losing streak is the equivalent of like a 13- or 14-game losing streak and you can kiss your season goodbye, how are you going to manage that? I think that's the thing I'm keeping my eye on. Uh, question two, what off-season pickup will shine brightest during the 60-game season? You know I love bilingual five languages, Didi Gregorius. When I tell you about one of our favorite players since we've had him on IT sitting there with, with drawings and all the different languages, but he could rake and he could do some damage, Chris. Came back from Tommy John last year, but let's go back to 18 with 27 home runs and 85, 86 ribbies, and 17, 25 home runs. I love a guy that bets on himself. Last year played 82 games, didn't have the greatest. Once that long-term deal, he went out there and signed a one-year deal with the Phillies and look out for big numbers in a small ballpark. They got that short porch and right also, just like Yankee Stadium, and they're ready to win a World Series, so we'll see. All right, that's a good pick. I'm going to go with a guy who actually signed a, a bigger deal in the offseason, Nicholas Castellanos, inked a four-year, $64 million deal with the Cincinnati Reds. Now, let's remember what he did when he got traded midseason from Detroit to the north side of Chicago. He went nuts in 51 games with the Cubs, a 321 average, 16 bombs, and OPS over 1,000. People forget because he's been around so long. He's only 28 years old, so this is part of a revamped Red squad that is feeling like they are postseason bound, so that is my pick. Uh, question number three. Oh, we're going to have the DH in the both leagues. That means that we're not going to see pitchers yeah. up there swinging for the fences and more likely heading back to the dugout because combined pitchers had an OPS of 322. For some perspective last year, the league average was about 758. So, Kev, which is the best DH combination in the National League? Well, you and I always talk about the Los Angeles Dodgers having about 8 to 15 outfielders. And how do you play all of them at once? Well, guess what? Dave Roberts will have a chance to put Jacques Peterson in the lineup, Max Muncy in the lineup. You're going to have a Chris Taylor in the lineup. You got Kike, do you love me? So they have a combination to put whatever they want, and they probably do it as well as anybody in the big leagues of lefty and righty and all the stuff. Well, guess what? They got an extra bat now that they can hang out there. And even Justin Turner getting a day off here and there. And A.J. Pollock, who has a tough time staying on the field every day. This is now, here you go, boys. Best matchup, and you'll get four or five at bats. I think that's a good call. No question. It was probably the, the easiest call. I, I, I like to call that the low-hanging fruit. I'm not going to get it on you because it's our first day back on television, and so you're looking for the easiest sure. answer. So yeah. uh, I'll give you credit for that. Uh, I dug a little deeper. I'm going to go to the opposite coast, the New York <laughs> Mets. They got a few guys that play outfield that aren't great defensively, but really good at the dish, right? So J.D. Easy. Davis, 22 bombs last year, almost 900 uh, OPS. Our buddy Dom Smith. And don't forget about Yoannis Cespedes. As long as he stays off the golf course and isn't hopping around, <laughs> you know, down on his farm or whatever he was doing in Florida where he stepped in a hole or Ooh. something like that. You know, it's been almost two years since he that had a big Justin, league at bat. I think that's a real. Yeah, what? but it's that. What are you doing? No, I'm just not, not talking baseball. You just took an, a low hanging fruit, New York Mets. We knew that. But it's that Dustin Johnson, that 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 move that he needs to get to. I think Cespedes that way his back and knee and foot and ankle and, you know, hog hunting won't get in the way right there. You know what I'm saying, Chris? Mm hmm. Yeah. Listen, your goal is to stay off the back page of the New York Post. Please, this season. We have a shortened season. That's all I ask of you. Thank you. Thank you.
Speaking of New York, the season reportedly will get going with the Yankees taking on the World Series champion Washington Nationals. And so we expect Max Scherzer to perhaps get the baseball on opening day over Steven Strasburg. And we know who he would face. Yeah, the 300 plus million dollar man that just inked up there in pinstripes. Garrett Cole who grew up a Yankee fan. <laughs> And now he gets to pitch for him. Scale of 1 to 10, how excited would you be if that was indeed the season opener? 10, period, end of story. I'm so excited mm. just to have a, a season opener on the calendar, yet alone a, a, a couple that's worth over a half a billion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you're talking about guys that make 30 to 34 starts a year and they're worth over a half a billion dollars, Who's not excited? You're going to see velocity. You're going to see nasty changeups. You're going to see wipeout sliders. You're going to see strikeouts. This is what baseball's about, and I am very excited, so I give it a 10. Uh, I'm going to temper my enthusiasm just a bit. Um, I will say an eight and a half. Obviously, you know, that's, that's lights out, these two guys. The problem is, well, hold on. If they if they pitch on July 23rd or July 24th, whatever day it ends up being, how far are they going to go? Four innings each? I mean, Scherzer, when they matched up in game one of the World Series, only went five. And, you know, the, the Astros really made him work. And we know that the Yankees can do the same against a pitcher. So, I, I mean, yes, I'm excited because they're two of the best arms in the game, two great competitors. I mean, Scherzer blowing snot bubbles all over the place and yelling at guys. It's fun. It just won't last as long. Carrying luggage. So do you understand why I can't? <laughs> yeah, carrying luggage. Yeah. You understand why I can't make it a 10, right? Yeah, I, I agree because of the innings pitched is why you're not making it a 10. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, don't take it personally. No. All right, last one. Name me one team that could surprise in a shortened season. Cincinnati Reds. They finished fourth place last year, Chris. When you're looking at a team that just got, hey, the moves, we talked about Nick Castellanos. I want to see Joey Votto have a monster 60 games. He can rake. Power will be there. Aquino. We, we, he comes up, hits home runs like it was left and right. But I look at the starting staff. I look at the bullpen. Pedro Strope is now in that bullpen. They have power out there. And Inglaze is one of my favorite. Suarez, Suarez is healthy. This team is so exciting and so fun. Maybe the big red machine might be the club to beat. We'll see. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a good choice. Um, I might be kicking myself for saying this team's name. I am on the train with the San Diego Padres. Let's go. I know you haven't been to the postseason in 14 years, but let's do it in part because of a lights-out bullpen. Kirby Yates, an all-star closer. Plus, you add Emilio Pagan from the Rays. The guy struck out 96 and 70 innings a year ago. Big free agent signing Drew Pomerantz. He's mm. back in San Diego. Last time we saw him as a starter. This time, he's coming out of the pen, and he was lights-out when he got dealt to the Milwaukee Brewers a season ago. So they got a bunch of young arms as well. You know, one of the best farm systems in all of baseball. The question is do you want to bring up some of those guys to help this team I say go for it man it's a 60 game season let's roll the dice and go for it let's not play the long game anymore you understand what I'm saying Kev yes we have we have good weather too so you never know October we can be walking down there flip-flops yeah so Padres go don't disappoint me please don't all right uh, before we had to break we did get a little news on Monday uh, Mike Leak is going to opt out of the 2020 season, so he's in the last year of a five-year $80 million contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks, so he is done. So, too, is World Series champion Ryan Zimmerman. Joe Ross is opting out as well. We're going to hear this a lot as we get ready for the reincarnation of summer camp on July 1st. Uh, what, what's your opinion on this? Does this surprise you, or you expect to hear more of it? No, I'll expect to hear more of this. Everybody's got different situations. Some have newborn babies. Some have sick family members. So there's a situation that you're going to do what's best for you and your family, and that's to stay safe, Chris. So you can't judge any of these situations. Everybody's unique, and everybody's got a grandfather or mom and dad or, like I said, a wife or a child that might be in jeopardy of this situation with COVID-19, and that's the best thing for their family, and that's what they're going to do. 
No question about it. And that's the way you have to look at it. I, I know we as sports fans, we get so wrapped up in, oh, well, wait a second, you're leaving my team high and dry. No, 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 this is a different situation. And the key word I've always used over the last four months or so is, is flexibility. We all have to be flexible and change our mindset. It's These guys aren't letting down a team. I mean, go ask any of the guys that they play with. Uh, do you think Ryan Zimmerman's letting? No. That's not it. I mean, this is real life stuff here. And so they're dealing with things and they're dealing with issues. And it isn't as simple as saying, ah, I don't I don't want to go out there. I mean, these are deep conversations they're having with with family members and with friends and probably teammates as well. And at the end of the day, let them go. If they're happiest being with their families mm -hmm. and not being at a baseball stadium, I'm good with it, man. I'm good with it.